First off, I'd just like to thank Coach Kennedy and the Texas A&M staff for giving us an opportunity to come down here and play. Uh, as a D2 school, it's a, it, it's a deal where, where our kids really look forward to this. We use it as recruiting tools, and obviously it helps our budget. So really gracious for the opportunity that he gave. Uh, they got a great team. I was proud of our kids. Uh, I thought we fought hard. Just had a, a spell there in the first half where we just turned the ball over and just couldn't hit shots. Can you talk a little bit more about the first half? I mean, y'all were only down by two halfway through. Yeah, at the at the ten minute mark, I think we were right there with them, and then uh, it seemed like we were on. I think it was fifteen or seventeen forever. I, I don't know how long it, it, we went, maybe eight or nine minutes, but it seemed like uh, a long time. Just without a field goal, we were just struggling, uh, finding some rhythms, and, and then we just kind of panicked there. We had some uh, traveling calls and just. Uh, uh, just got out of our flow, and, and uh, that was a stretch that just really got to us. I know y'all are favored to do well in your conference, but do you think um, playing such t tough competition will prepare y'all better? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. You know, uh, and, and we open up with, with a great team in Arkansas, Monticello, and uh, coming off this experience, I told the guys that we won't face a better team from this, and uh, uh, just it's, it's a great learning experience all around. A little disappointed in the. In, you said you had that stretch there where you didn't shoot well. I mean, because you guys have shot the three so yeah. well all year long, and yeah. that might have kept you in the game a little bit longer, made it a little more interesting. Yeah, and I, I wish Matt Haney could have played because he gives us a little bit more versatility. He's he's been shooting the ball really well this year, and uh, just came back after Christmas break, and and he had sprained his wrist really bad, and, and uh, he gives us another outside threat, a, a guy that can hit some shots, and and he's he's one of our senior leaders, and it, it hurt us that he wasn't out there. Because um, he, he's a great leader, teammate, and, and a guy that's been shooting pretty well from the field. Uh, you know, it's just, just one of those deals where, where it's kind of us and kind of them at the same time because we, we can't simulate their length and athleticism in practice every single day. Can you talk about Jeremy? I mean, I have so in nine for eleven coming in, and then sh shot the ball again well today. I mean, yeah, that's a hundred and fifty percent. It's, it's yeah, I think he's uh, second in the country or something in uh, in Division Two in, in shooting, and and it's something every day. I mean, he's he shoots like that every single day in practice. I mean, it seems like uh, his off days are are, are very few and, and far between, and he's he's definitely a threat for us. And I thought we were able to get the ball to the basket several times because uh, A and M was a, was afraid to leave him there. By anything else? Oh. No. Thank you. Had, had Thank you. Turn oh, 15 rebounds pretty quickly. I mean, Ray Turner for them. Oh, man. He, yeah, he's a monster. Yeah. Is that just someone, something where you guys just never see a guy that kind of, that kind of size and athletic ability? Uh, in, in our league, we don't we don't see David Lebeau's and Ray Turner, especially on the floor at the same time. Uh, you know, we we have a, a kid that we tried to emulate at, at home. He's redshirt and Paul Cooper transferred from Texas Tech, and we just we basically said they're going to put two Paul Coopers on the floor at the same time all game long, and and uh, we, we aren't a great rebounding team as it is, and and he definitely he definitely uh, hurt us.